And breaking news right now, Russia says that it has arrested a Wall Street Journal reporter and is accusing him of spying for the U.S. Evan Gershkovich is an American journalist based in Moscow. He has worked there for the Wall Street Journal since January of last year. Well, the Wall Street Journal says it is deeply concerned now for his safety. And I do want to bring in Paul Rykoff now, national security and political analyst, a military veteran as well, and president of Righteous Media. Paul, it's good to see you. Thanks for being here. Great to be with you, Natasha. What is your initial reaction to this detainment of this American journalist? He needs to be released. I think all Americans should be outraged and, and the global community should understand this is an American citizen who's being held by Putin. Uh, he's he's a, a civilian, he's a journalist, uh, and I think it's another example of how Vladimir Putin will use any option or any chip that he can to try to influence the U.S. and the West uh, in, in, in support of his you know, global agenda. Uh, we've seen this with high profile uh, captives in the past, like Brittany Grenier and others. Uh, and it's clear that, that Putin's going to use this reporter as a chip to try to create leverage uh, around Ukraine and around the world. And I'm sure the president will condemn it if he hasn't already. And we're going to demand the release of this journalist ASAP. Interesting. And we're getting some information both from Russia's Federal Secret Service, also a statement from the Wall Street Journal. So the FSB uh, issued a statement and it reads, quote, that it was established that Gershkovich, uh, acting at the request of the American side, collected information constituting a state secret about the activities of an enterprise of the Russian military industrial complex. And they add that he was detained while attempting to obtain classified information. And then meanwhile, the Wall Street Journal uh, issuing a statement just now as well, saying that it, quote, vehemently denies the allegations from the FSB and seeks the immediate release of our trusted and dedicated reporter. We stand in solidarity with Evan and his family. How do you think the U.S. should respond at this point? Strongly. And they should condemn this. They should call that statement from Russia for what it is. It's propaganda. Uh, the Russian government can't be believed. Putin can't be believed. Uh, this is the same government and leadership that's conducting genocide in Ukraine, killing civilians and violating basically every war crimes act known to man. So Russia can't be trusted. And we can't take that statement for anything other than propaganda. We should support The Wall Street Journal and any American who's being held by Putin, Russia or any of their allies. So I hope they can demand that release quickly uh, without any kind of conditions. We shouldn't have to release anything in response to that. Uh, this is a, a, an American citizen, a civilian and a journalist, and he should be released immediately without any conditions. What message do you think that Putin walked away with from the Brittany Griner situation and the prisoner swap that took place uh, that included the return of Victor Boot? Well, I, I hope that he walked away with an understanding and the world walked away with an understanding that Americans won't leave other Americans behind. I know we could talk about whether or not America gave up too much or, or too little, but the bottom line is America has to draw a line and say that we will not tolerate, we will not allow American citizens to be taken hostage by Putin or anyone else. And I think that's a strong message to send to, uh, to folks like Brittany Grenier and also you know, American military veterans who've been held by Putin and others. Americans need to always know that America will come for them. America will not leave them behind and America will do all we can to bring them back. And I think this is just the latest example of how Putin's gonna play these games uh, with America, with the West and, and with the world. And we've gotta stay strong. We've gotta continue to support Ukraine and NATO and maintain America's uh, national security interests because uh, folks like China are also watching and we can't can't fold to, to Putin's uh, dictatorial demands. What should the U.S. do differently that uh, compared with what it did do during the whole Brittany Griner uh, conversation negotiation and the ultimate release of Victor Boot? Or do you expect that it will play out largely the same way? We will make a major concession and, and send back uh, a prisoner or a person that they want home. I don't know. Uh, you know, in, in situations like this, there's so much that we don't know. I know that if that, if that was my brother or, or my spouse, I'd want him home immediately. Uh, and we should look to the families for, for their guidance and, and try to support them in any way that we can. And also trust that there are national security uh, experts at the Pentagon, at the State Department, at the White House, who are, who are doing all they can to bring that American back home and not give up any more than we have to. But we can't be, uh, you know, uh, humbled by, by, by dictators like Putin. He is a criminal the likes of which we've never seen. He's going to play every game and, and every, do every trick and tell every lie that he can to try to manipulate us and try to divide Americans. And I think most of all, with, with regard to any national security issue, we got to try to stay united as Americans. Republicans, Democrats are so often divided in Congress. We can't let Putin exploit those divisions, manipulate those uh, divisions and compound them because that's what he wants. He wants Americans divided. He wants us squabbling on cable news TV and, and, and divided all across America. We can't let him have that.
And I do want to turn to some breaking news that we've been tracking overnight. Uh, those two Army Black Hawk helicopters that crashed in Kentucky last night and, and nine soldiers lost their lives. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the details that you're tracking from that this morning, as well as anything more about the HH-60 Black Hawk helicopters uh, that were involved in this crash? Yeah, the Black Hawk is, is the workhorse uh, of the American Army. Uh, you know, I've spent a lot of time in them and around them. They're a part of everybody's training for the most part. And I think it, what it should underscore is that being in the American military is dangerous. Whether you're on the front lines in a place like Syria where there were combat operations this week and American troops were wounded, or if you're training back home in Fort Campbell in Kentucky, being in the American military is dangerous. Training is extremely dangerous. These nine families are going through the unimaginable call and, and knock at the door right now. And maybe, again, it's another opportunity for Americans to unite in support of a group of people who are on the front lines for us overseas and here at home. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.